today I thought I'd do the introduction uh, whilst out on um, an unusually, for the moment, dry dog walk. And the birds sing, it's first thing in the morning, so I thought I'd do my first few minutes outside. Um, Welcome to Life Coaching on the Move podcast. I'm your host, Dawn Fisk, uh, life coach, trainer, mentor and speaker and have been for the last 17 years. Welcome along. For those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that occasionally when I can, when weather permits, I love to do this out in nature um, with birdsong, with the dog, uh, because I just believe for all of us, we are still that caveman and we need to be outside more. We're not made for artificial heat and light. We need to be outside. It helps so much with mental health and combating depression and stress, Um, vitamin D from the sun, oxygen in our lungs and brain from the fresh air, some exercise and nature. And apparently there are certain shapes in nature that you can only see in nature, such as trees, Um, you can't see them anywhere else, that have an effect on our human brain, which helps to massively to de-stress us. Um, We are still meant to roam the plains and be upright and outside and active. So it's so, so good for your well-being. Anyway, so welcome to my dog walk, um, just for a few minutes. The rest of the podcast is not recorded here. I just wanted to say, um, this is me. I speak from the heart. I don't script write or anything like that. I just chat as I'm walking along. Um, Today's podcast is about cheering you up. It's about um, getting over those emotions that you may have at the moment, worries um, and insecurities and um, things that are distressing you at the moment. It's helping you to combat those. So it's a very practical podcast. Um, It's also aimed at helping you get over what others are saying to you. So it's about what you're saying to yourself about the situation, but also apply it to what others may be saying to you. You'll see what I mean when we get into the podcast. But bear in mind, there are two approaches or two uses for today's episode. Both external effects from others, but also internal effects from yourself. So apply the strategies that I cover today to both things. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's helpful. If it is, please drop me a line, dawn at milestone-coaching.co.uk and um, give me feedback if you want to or drop me a line on possible subjects you would like covered and I will do my best to cover those. So uh, let's not waste any more time. I'm going to enjoy the dog walk. I hope you enjoy the episode. Today I want to start by asking you what's upsetting you or what's worrying you, Um, what's making you feel down, what is generally uh, negative at the moment for you, what's holding you back, Uh, those sorts of things. So if you give that some thought um, and conjure up in your mind what is it that's causing you anxiety at the minute, what's causing you apprehension, what's causing you some worry, um, angst, you know, angst right now for you um, in the last week or two. Maybe something ongoing, um, maybe something that's kind of hanging over you, keeps knocking on your door, pestering you. Um, maybe it's something that's been interrupting your sleep a little bit. Um, just generally affecting you because today I'm going to cheer you up. That's my plan. (laughs) Uh, A tall order I hear you uh, say, bearing in mind that I don't know what it is that you're encountering and I don't know who you are and uh, I can't chat with you or get a response. But I'm going to try and cheer you up today. How? Right, well that's that's, uh, my challenge. (laughs) So if you've got your example now ready, if you've got your topic um, or your material ready and you know, you know what it is, ask yourself, what are you saying about it? Why is it worrying you? Why is it causing you some nerves, apprehension, concern um, or upset? or some emotion, why? What, what is it that you're saying in your head? If I had a microphone a little, or a tape recorder in your mind, what would I hear you saying about it? 
it may well be worth actually if you get your notebook and pen the one that I suggest we all have notebook if you want to call it that or journal or your working tool whatever it is um, whatever you want to label it I do recommend if you haven't heard me say this before in previous podcast episodes it is always worth having a dedicated notebook for your your growth your development um, for things like this so if you want to stop this podcast pause it for a second and write, write down the things that are worrying you or upsetting you currently in the last week or two and write down what you are saying about them what thoughts you're running uh, what patterns um, what's your little chatterbox telling you about it you know if I could hear it on a microphone what would I hear you saying about it so if you can pause the film uh, the film <laughs> pause the um, podcast and do some recording of your thoughts write write them all down um, and actually just seeing them in black and white is quite profound it's quite a profound experience to see your thoughts on paper and um, reflect on them because once we get them out and record them down on paper we realize sometimes how silly maybe they are that's without judgment uh, me is without me judging them um, how unhelpful they are how disempowering how negative how um, you know unhealthy they are so that's the first task is a to know what it is you're saying B to see them in their entirety and their worth and the effect that they're having and to reflect on them that that's the first stage so do that pause pause the episode and come back in a second so now that you've done that activity or you, you maybe you're driving along or you're on the train or something you can't do that but you can give it some time in your head time and some reflection um, now that you know what you're saying now that you know what your chatterbox is telling you you'll see that it's just telling you a story um, we tell ourselves stories in fact we make stories up all the time um, if we we need gap we need to fill the gaps we need explanations we need reasons for things don't we us humans seek for uh, reasons explanations so um, and we fill the gaps in and if we don't have that information we will often just tell ourselves the story and make it up now we assume then it gets some power over us and we assume it's correct but actually we've just told ourselves stories and often I run a workshop for organizations entitled how to have difficult conversations uh, with your teams it's often for management um, on or part of a leadership development program and it's about how if you if you lead a team how to have those awkward or difficult conversations and um, one of the parts of that workshop one of the things I teach managers is let, let's say for example uh, you're a manager of a team and you've got a person on your team who they're normally fine they're normally productive efficient reliable um, they work well uh, but for the last two or three weeks he or she has been turning up late every morning um, and you're getting really cross about this now you just and you start to tell yourself a story your chatterbox starts telling you things you know just basic uh, basic disrespect they're flouting the rules everybody else turns up on time why should they get away with it what what is this doing to the rest of the team they're spreading low morale it's affecting everybody how dare they um, you know uh, they just don't care anymore we start filling those gaps in and we tell ourselves stories that they don't that they don't regard us they don't respect us as a manager or the rest of the team the team members they're not contributing then we lump the things in that they're not performing um, any better than anybody else they're not pulling their weight um, and so anyway long story short we realize we've got to have a little word with them um, so we call them in for a meeting and uh, we're going to have a word we've we've called them for a meeting at nine o'clock tomorrow and we're going to have it out with them um, so but beforehand we come into that meeting with all sorts of loaded beliefs that story we filled all the gaps in um, so we've got our perceptions and that's affecting how we feel towards that person it's affecting our whole approach to that meeting 
Um, all because we've told ourselves some stories and we've filled the gaps with our own perceptions. And so one of the big learnings that I give on this uh, leadership training about how to have um, difficult conversations is to not do that, is to collapse down those stories, is to um, stop filling in those um, gaps, to stop telling ourselves stories and so on. It's to actually wait and seek to understand, is to find out the evidence, um, to find out the, the, uh, the reality of the situation and the facts. Um, so you go into that meeting without any stories at all, without any preconceptions, um, without any assumptions. And it's only then that you can properly listen. Uh, so that, that's one of the learnings. But we do this in life all the time. Um, we start making up stories. That, sorry, that's my sat-nav in the background. Um, so if that story that they don't, they're basically flouting the rules, they don't respect us, they don't regard us anymore, that affects how we feel and that affects how we treat that person and approach that meeting. But we do this in life all the time. Let's say your friend is constantly late or your friend has not shown up. You had scheduled to meet, they've not shown up. Now, depending on what you're saying, it will change how you feel. You may be saying to them, to yourself, oh, um, they were really down last time I saw them, she's got lots on their mind, I'm worried about them, it's not like them to be um, unreliable, it's not like them not to show up, I wonder what's wrong, I need to be there for them. So you might be compassionate and caring, or you might say things like, oh, that's brilliant, I, I cancelled so-and-so for today, they never consider how, um, I, you know, I've given up this, I've given up that, I've put childcare in place, um, they've got no regard for me, they just think of themselves, or whatever. So we make up stories, and those stories affect how we feel, and they're probably wrong, they're actually rarely accurate. Um, it can be all sorts of things that are going on. So when we get into that meeting as the leader and we sit down and we seek to understand, which is what we teach on the program, ask questions, tell them what you've noticed. I've noticed you've been late a lot over the last two or three weeks and this isn't like you. Is there anything I need to know? Is there anything I need to understand? And then that team member may well fill in the gaps for you. Yes, um, my wife's um, become very, very sick. She's in hospital and I'm having to take the children to school every morning. Or uh, our, our marriage has broken down, we've parted and I now have to take the children every morning. Or, or uh, we've got a new baby, I've been up through the night or and I've got to take the toddler. So, something like that, it, they will generally often be a reason for these things and then we can handle that properly and completely and offer our help is there anything we need to do, do you, should we change your hours slightly where you start later and you finish later can I put any support in place for you would you like would it help if you work from home on a few mornings or so on and so on so you'd be a really good manager leader you'd get good commitment back and loyalty and some understanding it helps morale other people in the team would understand could also offer some help and assistance so on and so on so by seeking first to understand you get the actual hard and fast facts you can deal with it in a different way it takes out the feelings and the emotions that you put in there in the first place by making assumptions and making stories um, it cuts all of that out you you deal with it fairly you deal with it professionally you deal with it honestly uh, it doesn't affect you in the same way it has a better outcome for all concerned so collapse down those stories same with the friend that didn't turn up you don't make assumptions don't make up a story seek first to understand we we were planning to meet today uh, you didn't show up I'm concerned has anything happened oh no sorry I just forgot then you can deal with that however you feel best according to your friendship your relationship and so on but seek first to understand um, but we do this in life generally it's not just when we're leading a team or something like that somebody will cut us up in the car dangerously and aggressively for example now depending on what we're saying in our head will affect how we feel we might say 
that's outrageous. The, the man's clearly, or a woman, um, a real, uh, how dare they? I could have had my children in the car. You could just kill somebody. I'm going to get them. I'm going to get them at the next junction. So you put your foot down, you tailgate them. You enter into the same similar sorts of behavior. Um, and, you know, it, it affects what you do and how you react according to what you say in your head. Alternatively, you might think, gosh, that person's in a real hurry. I wonder what's happened there. I wonder maybe their wife's in labor or maybe they've been called to the hospital because somebody's very, very sick or uh, whatever. So that again would change how you felt as a response to the story that you're making up in your head. So there are no right or wrong stories because we're probably wrong. <laughs> So that I guess uh, it's it's foolish to do. It's a waste of energy because we have no way of knowing. Um, so what we need to do is realise that actually our emotions are being provoked merely by the words that we're saying, merely by the story that we're telling ourselves. Um, it's not generally based on evidence. Um, it's just our assumptions. It's just all our own stuff that we're bringing to the table and we're drawing a conclusion and a story as a result. Um, <clears throat> so when you bring it down to its real basic level, the words that we're saying in our head are therefore affecting us and provoking emotions, sometimes good emotions, sometimes not so good emotions. So it's words. That's all it is. It's words. And when you break that down to the next level, words are just letters. They're just a combination of letters. We made them up. Man made up those letters. And if we're in, if you're listening to me now, it's English language, which is basically made up of 26 letters in our alphabet, jumbled up in certain ways. So all our emotions are being provoked by the words that we're running in our heads, which are basically just a different jumble of 26 letters that we've put together to conjure up certain words that we use in a certain pattern and a format to provoke a certain reaction. That's all they are. So the things that you thought about at the very beginning of this podcast, when I said what's upsetting you or what's worrying you or what's causing you negativity or disempowering thoughts, they're basically just words, a string of letters that we've thrown together in a, 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 from a selection of 26 possible letters, jumbled up in certain patterns, put together in certain sentences, added together in certain paragraphs that we're running in our head, that we're saying to ourselves that are provoking a reaction. And when we realise that, it loses all its power when we think, actually, I'm just telling myself a story. So what story did you write down? What are you saying to yourself about this situation? Sometimes uh, when I first started presenting in groups or, or two groups, sometimes I would look at, um, I'd, be, I'd be on my feet talking to this new audience, don't know them, I don't work there, I've been brought in to the company or um, to the audience to present, so I don't know them. I don't know their characters, I don't know their personalities, I don't know the dynamics between them and their team, I don't know anything. All I see is a sea of faces looking at me. Now, some people could have that glazed look, just nodding like the nodding dog, probably thinking about 50 million other things. I must remember to send that email. Oh, I haven't phoned so-and-so, I must pick up such and such on the way home. And they've got that glazed look. Others are nodding off, perhaps, <laughs> especially if I get that dead awful um, slot straight after lunch and it's a hot room. You might get one just fighting sleep. You see them fighting to keep their eyes open. Now, they may have been up four or five times with a young baby in the night. They may have been poorly. Um, it, it, it's often some of their stuff. It's some of their history that you are not party to. You do not know the background story. Of course, I might, as a fledgling presenter, start beating myself up. Oh, I'm boring, I'm rubbish, they don't like this. Sorry, you keep hearing my car start because I'm sat at the, a school watching my boy play hockey. And it's packed, there are cars everywhere, no parking spaces. So people keep asking me to move or me asking them to move. Um, as the two games, the first game is finishing and the next game starting, parents are leaving. So the, 
my lot are all trying to park up while the rest all leave. So it's not that I'm on a, a road traveling along being dangerous. I'm just in a little tiny car park trying to get a space. Um, so if you're getting upset about something, you're, you're using the wrong words. You're stringing the wrong words together and it's having an impact. But you can equally string different words together for a different impact. So what I'm saying to you is be mindful of the stories you're telling yourself. It wouldn't help me as a new presenter who maybe at the beginning was nervous, maybe I didn't have that much confidence, um, and if I start telling myself, oh gosh, he's falling asleep, he's bored, that one's not smiling, I've just smiled at him as I'm talking, he didn't smile back, he's got that glazed look. Or if I start telling myself that mid-presentation, what's that going to do for me as a presenter? What's it going to do for my future success? Is it going to keep me in that field? No. Um, so we mustn't say things like that. We mustn't beat ourselves up or be harsh on ourselves. It's just the choice story. I need to remind myself that I don't know what's going on for the audience, each individual one. There may be some negativity amongst that group that I'm picking up that I know nothing about. Um, it may be that one person's just asked a question that has really provoked a reaction in the other because they don't like each other. And so it may be nothing to do with my content. It may be prehistory of that group. Um, so it, we we're not in control of what is always going on. We're not in control of the people around us. We're not in control of their reactions. We're in control of ourselves and our own situation and how we respond to it and what we're saying to ourselves about it. Um, and that is just merely a choice of the story that we're telling ourselves. So as in my training for leaders, I say collapse down the stories, get rid of all your stories and your preconceptions, go in with an open mind and seek to understand. If we took that philosophy on in life generally, all the time with relationships, friendships, things that are upsetting us, somebody didn't call us when they said they would and now we're upset or something like that, um, then, you know, it, it changes how we feel about things. We've got to stop telling ourselves the stories if we can and go in with an empty mind. Um, or if we are going to tell ourselves stories about why that person cut us up, make sure it's a helpful story, the one that doesn't hook into us, one that doesn't get a negative reaction or provoke a scene or provoke trouble um, or create angst. So we are in control of what we say and then just strip it down to its basic level. His basic level is it's just words. And the basic level of words are they're just letters from a series of 26 possible letters. Um, and we've just jumbled them together to create a few words, to create a few sentences, to add a couple of paragraphs together. And that, in the end, can be incredibly powerful to provoke absolute genuine feeling and emotion and sleeplessness and stress, stress response, churning stomach, upset, increased heart rate, but all from words, all from an alphabet of 26 letters. So check what you're saying, question yourself and just choose the right words, choose the right combinations, tell yourself helpful stories, uh, fill the gaps with helpful things. We will do it. I can't say to you, stop doing it because you will do it. We're human. We all chatter all the time. But notice what they are and bring them down to this basic level of just wording and um, tell yourself good stories. So look back now at your notebook. See what you're worried about and upset about. Think about the story you're telling yourself and change that story. Change your words, change the letters, change the combinations and feed yourself some good stories. Um, that's what I want to leave you with today. For the next, rest of this week, look at, look at that, be mindful of it. Awareness is half the battle. Um, and practice. We've got to practice it because it is a skill. Confidence is a skill and we can learn it. Um, we just need to practice. So for the next week, rewrite your stories. Listen to them, rewrite them, be mindful of them and let this get an ingrained strong skill for you. The more you practice it, the more you're aware of it, the better you will get at it. Um, and so good luck. Enjoy your storytelling because they, they are generally just stories and tell yourself some good ones. Have a good week. Thank you.